that is it guys for qualifying for the 2019 us grand prix and definitely at the top of the grid we got a top six that was very surprising compared to what we thought we would get coming into this weekend and here are the results of qualifying for the us grand prix of 2019 so on pole position valtteri bottas from sebastian vettel in second Max Verstappen third with Charles Leclerc in fourth, Lewis Hamilton fifth, and Alex Albon in sixth. Completing the top ten, two McLarens of Sainz and Norris with Ricardo in P9 and Pierre Gasly in P10. Knocked out in Q2, Hulkenberg, Magnussen, Kvyat, Stroll, Grosjean, and then knocked down Q1, Giovinazzi, Raikkonen, Russell, Perez, and Robert Kubica. But now let's get into the teams and how they did. And first off, Mercedes and for Valtteri Bottas. Once again, in 2019, we've seen this plenty of times where when the time comes for him to put in a great lap, he produces it, and he did once again. His first run was the lap record, but also the run that got him pole position as I don't think anyone really improved that much in the second and final run of Q3. It's a great performance by Valtteri Bottas, again, proving his critics wrong. He is absolutely deserving of being in that car and has put in another great performance today. For Lewis Hamilton, though, it was looking great, wasn't it, until uh, qualifying three. But in qualifying three, that's not good enough. Um, the thing with Lewis Hamilton, though, is if you look at his two runs, they weren't that scruffy or bad. I mean, at turn one in his first run, he did run a bit wider than you would want to. Uh, at turn one but there was nothing glaring about lewis hamilton's laps that told you exactly why he was three tenths off his teammate valtteri bottas and has qualified in p5 and that is a bit of a worry going into the race of course he does need p8 or higher to win the world drivers championship but he wants to be on the podium at the very least to do it this time so yeah, that is a bit of a worry going into into uh, tomorrow's race. But we know how great he is when it comes to the races. And we know his car is probably the best race car out there. So, yeah, he should be a lot better tomorrow. Next up, Ferrari. And Ferrari, I think you have to say, considering the expectations going into the weekend of what they would do in qualifying, this was disappointing. P2 and P4 for Sebastian Vettel. Could he have done more to get pole position? Well, absolutely. I think he could have on the final run, but just couldn't improve his time. And for Charles Leclerc, he had a very scruffy uh, final run as well. So definitely the drivers could have done better, but P2 and P4 in qualifying at this track just is nowhere near good enough. I know Charles Leclerc is probably slightly down on power after putting in an old power unit, but still with Sebastian Vettel, surely they had a good enough car to get pole position, but it just didn't happen. And I'll be honest, I do fear for Ferrari tomorrow because they don't have a quicker race car than Mercedes and Red Bull. And unless they get into the lead on the first lap, it's really tough to see how they're going to win the US Grand Prix. So a tough day tomorrow, I think, coming up for the Ferrari team. Third out of the top teams, though, of course, is Red Bull. And third it is for Max Verstappen. Great performance by Max Verstappen. Only half or just over half a tenth off pole position. And he is my favourite for the race win tomorrow because he is, as we've seen in the last two years in the races, so, so good at this track. And now he's in a proper grid position for once, for the first time really since 2016. He can now properly go for the race victory. And considering how quick the Red Bull car has been this weekend and how quick it will be in the race, he has to be, for me, the favourite to win. And his qualifying performance was absolutely brilliant. Alex Albon qualifying in P6. I still think Albon could have been maybe a tenth or so closer to Max Verstappen today. But in terms of grid position, 
I don't think he was ever going to qualify higher than sixth place if the front five didn't have a reliability issue or crash out. So in terms of position, Albon did the best he could. But in terms of lap time, I still think there is another tenth, tenth and a half in there for Alex Albon. But he will start the race tomorrow on the soft compound tyre, the unfavourable tyre to start on. But he will be very quick at the start. But for Red Bull... They might be able to win their first US Grand Prix tomorrow since 2013. But now let's get into the midfield. And first off, Renault. Even though this season has been a disaster for Renault, if you consider the recent form of Renault, this performance was actually pretty good. P9 and P11 because at Suzuka... Both drivers were way, way off getting in the top 10. And in Mexico, I think they were P12 and P13. So P9 and P11, considering how they normally are in race pace terms, is pretty good. And I think Renault, absolutely tomorrow, are going to be strong and they're going to have a quick car. I'm not sure they'll race McLaren because I think McLaren do have a very good pace around this track. And I think will in the race as well. But they will surely be ahead of teams like Toro Rosso in the race tomorrow. And they have to if they are to secure P5 in the constructors. But next up is McLaren. And what else more is there to say? P7 and P8, great performance. Fourth row lockout. Have to say though, Carlos Sainz probably put in the best performance of qualifying today. Not because of his position, but because of his lap time. He was only 8 tenths of a second off pole position. In that car, that is a pretty special effort. And after the first run of qualifying three, he was almost one second faster than Lando Norris. Great performance and again showing why he has been so incredible this season. And also Lando doing very well considering he's never raced here before. So great for McLaren and hopefully in tomorrow's race they can continue that good uh, form and result. Next up though is Alpha. What is there really to say anymore? Uh, the only positive I can find is that Antonio Giovinazzi again outqualifies Kimi Raikkonen at a track he's never raced at before. Other than that, there's nothing positive to say. 16th and 17th. Absolutely terrible for that team. For the home team, though, Haas F1, I think they did the best they could. P12 and P15, I think, is the absolute best they could do today, considering how the drivers are around this track and considering how quick the car is at the moment. So I can't really fault the drivers or the team. They did the best they could, but in the race tomorrow, we know they will drop quite far off the pace and will be nowhere near the points. They're not going to be anywhere near teams like McLaren, Renault, Toro Rosso, maybe even racing points as well. So yeah, I think today best they could do, but not going to result in a points finish at the home Grand Prix. Next up, Toro Rosso. Great drive today by Pierre Gasly, sneaking into P10. And I think to be honest, considering his speed in that car, probably about the best he could do you could argue he could have got p9 because he has been very quick this weekend but i think p10 is still a good position uh daniel kiviat though p13 i think it was not that great he should have been really if he wasn't going to get in the top 10 you know p11 p12 you know right on the fringes but p13 is you know not a great position for him to start the race from tomorrow but Toro Rosso do have fundamentally this weekend and at the moment in Formula 1 a very good car. So if they can get good enough starts and avoid trouble, who knows? Maybe they can take on Renault and really get after them and beat them in terms of scoring points in the Grand Prix. That's what they've got to do if they are to finish P5 in the Constructors by the end of the season. And the final midfield team racing point, Lance Stroll could have improved his position from P14, but... He made a massive error at turn one, which cost him about two and a half to three tenths of a second. If he didn't make that mistake, he probably could have ended up in P12, which would have been quite good for him to start the race from, considering how his race pace is and how he normally starts the races. So disappointing there for Stroll. Perez, though, of course, after not uh, stopping at the Weigh Bridge in practice, he starts from the pit lane 
anyway. So that's why he ended up in P19 and didn't really do anything. And finally is Williams. And of course, they have the slowest car. But that is qualifying for the 2019 US Grand Prix. Who of the top six we have for the race tomorrow. I think we are in definitely for a great race at the Circuit of Americas.